Welcome to the Harbinger Consulting Group webinar, SmartView Report Automation. This webinar assumes you know the SmartView end user interface and that you want to understand what the SmartView toolkit can do to automate reporting. What probably exists for you now is that either you create reports manually yourself or manually update report templates created by others. A little bit something like this. Here's a report that you might get or create yourself and whenever you want to change the market from something like market to east you just type it in and press the refresh button and receive the new data. But that's probably not what you want. What you want is a different analysis for multiple markets, multiple products, etc. And you don't want to create them by hand, you want to create them automatically. Here's an example of a sheet using report automation. You give the end user a report or analysis template from which they can make selections to create the desired reports. They can connect with a connect button and then after they connect to the database they can then choose to select a checkbox to change from profit to profit percent, select from a drop down box the market they want displayed in the report, or select from option buttons which scenario, actual budget, etc. that they want to see. Let's take a look at, a, at an example of that. Here's a similar report. There's a connect login button where the user supplies their username and their password and once they do so they can do things like check this checkbox and the cell changes to profit and the data changes or they select a different scenario from an option button and the cell A4 and A18 change from actual to budget and the data changes. I'll switch back to actual so you can see it changing again and a drop-down box, what's technically called a combo box, where the user can select the market they desire, in this case Nevada. Once again, the cells A6 and B20 change, and the data changes. That's what we want to get to. Well, from the previous example, you've probably already gathered what report automation is. But basically, it's when no user interaction is required other than to press a button, check a box, make a selection from a list. And when they do so, the report content changes based on the selection they just made. So for the example here, we've got a checkbox that's going to evidently change cell D1 from either budget to actual or actual to budget. Now that we know what report automation is, how is it done? Well, basically, you customize and automate your SmartView reporting by using Microsoft Excel macros. And if you don't know, a macro is a saved sequence of Excel menu commands or keystrokes. And that macro is written in a language called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. It's the standard macro language for all of the Microsoft Office products. And these macros written in VBA contain Excel functions. Functions do things for you like select cells, change the font, etc. And smart view functions that do smart things for you like connecting to an S-based database, retrieving from it, and disconnecting from the S-based database. The macros I was just talking about are triggered by Excel controls. And the Excel controls are those buttons, text boxes, combo boxes, etc. These controls allow the user to make a selection and when they make the selection we change the contents of the report and then that macro that is triggered by the control retrieves the data based on that user selection. Here's a complete example of that previous simple selection I showed you. We've got our report and we're going to change cell D1 based upon the Excel control, the checkbox, here. When they check the checkbox, we're going to ch change cell D1, and it's going to trigger this macro. And we'll talk more about this macro coming up in a moment. Any report automation consists of three steps, whether it's a simple example like the one I just showed you, or a complex example. Step one, decide which dimension member you're going to change. Step two, create the Excel control used to change that member, and step three, write the macro associated with the control. And that, of course, is the most difficult part. 
So step one is which dimension memory are you going to change? And I recommend that you usually change a page header dimension member. But let's make sure you understand what a page header dimension member is. In this example, Cola's root beer, cream soda, fruit soda product are all row headers. That's because they only describe the data on that row. Cola's describes the data on row three, root beer, the data on row four, etc. Quarter one, two, three, four, and year are column headers. They describe the data only in that column. Quarter one describes the data in column B, quarter two in column C, etc. But page headers, like measures, market, and scenario, are headers that apply to all of the data on the sheet. How do we know that they apply to all of the data on the sheet? Because there's only one member from that dimension in the report. I've got five product dimension members, I've got five year dimension members, and I know you may not be familiar with this database, but there are three other dimensions called measures, market, and scenario, and I only have the top level members on display. Since there's only one member on display in this report, they account for all of the data in the report, not just a single column or a single row. The member from that dimension does not have to be the top level member like it is here for measures of market and scenario. What distinguishes a page header is that there's only one member of that dimension in the report. In report automation, we usually want to change a page header because when we do so, we're changing all of the data on the report, not just the data in a single row or column. If you want to, in your report automation, just change a row or column header dimension member, that's fine but I'm recommending most of the time you'll probably want to change a page header dimension member. So in this example, we're going to change the scenario dimension member in cell D1. Step 2 involves creating the Excel control, and we want to create an active X control. How do we do that? I'll explain in a moment. But it basically involves three steps. Drawing the control, changing the properties of the control, and then viewing the code of the control. And I'll take you through all three of those steps in an example in Excel. To create an ActiveX control in Excel 2003 or earlier, we need to go to the toolbars, View, Toolbars, and open up a toolbar called the Control Toolbox. This is the toolbar necessary to create an ActiveX control in Excel 2003 and earlier. To create ActiveX controls in Excel 2007, go to the Developer tab, select the Insert button, which has a drop-down, and in the drop-down you see Form Controls and ActiveX Controls, and you want to make sure you're selecting your control from the ActiveX Controls area. In either case, you select the control, in this case the checkbox, left click and drag, and draw the control onto the sheet. Step two is to right click the control and select properties from the pop-up menu. There are many properties for all of the controls, but you'll generally speaking just be working with one or two or three of them. One that you'll always want to change is the name. Give it a name, and I recommend giving it a name with a three-character prefix of what kind of control it is. In this case, I'm giving it a three-character prefix of CHK for checkbox, and then something about significant to what you are doing with this control. I'm going to be changing the scenario, so I'll call it CHK scenario. But that doesn't help my end user, so another property I want to change is obviously the caption. Check for actual uncheck for budget. And then close the properties window. 